having year two. So instead of doing some English today, we're going to do some RE. And this term we are thinking about thankfulness. So already we've thought about things that we're thankful, that we're grateful for. And so today we're going to think about how different religions show thankfulness. Then we're going to start thinking about harvest. So we're going to be describing the significance of harvest, the importance of harvest to Christians, why Christians celebrate it, how they celebrate it and why it's so important. So before we get started, I want to know what you already know. So pause the video after this and have a think with someone at home or someone in school about everything you already know about harvest. So you might want to think about what happens at harvest time. You might want to think about what happens in a church at harvest time and why do harvest festivals take place? And I'll give you a clue. We usually have a harvest festival in school. So have a think about what happens there. So pause the video and once you're ready, we're going to read a story to find out about what happens at harvest and why it's important. So now listen to the story of Squeak's Harvest Festival and find out what happens at harvest time. Squeak was a harvest mouse. He usually lived in the hedgerows around the fields where the farmer grew the wheat, but the weather was becoming cold and Squeak decided it was time to find a new cosy place to build his nest. The next day, Squeak set out on an adventure to find a new home. Scurrying along at top speed, Squeak dashed here and there, across fields where the farmer was working and through hedges, all the time using his brilliant hearing to listen out for any danger. At last, Squeak arrived at a farmyard. As Squeak looked up, he couldn't believe his eyes. There in front of him was a barn full of warm, cosy hay. Squeak knew straight away that was the place for his new home. He wasted no time. Squeak dashed into the barn and scrambled to the top of the hay. There he began to make a new nest. That night Squeak slept soundly, snuggled up in his warm new nest surrounded by the sweet smelling hay. But in the morning Squeak was woken up by a strange sound. There were people laughing and children talking. Squeak looked down from the safety of his nest to find the barn full of people. What could be happening? As Squeak took a careful look around, he discovered something very interesting. Resting against a bale of hay was a cross made from some ears of corn all twisted together. And at the foot of the cross, there was lots of yummy looking food. Squeak didn't think anyone would mind if he took one of the juicy blackberries that were there. So as quick as a flash, Squeak smuggled his new treasure back up to his nest. From the safety of his nest, Squeak watched everything that was happening. It soon became clear that the people were Christians and this was a harvest festival. The people sang special songs and said thank you prayers to God for food and other gifts. The thing that Squeak liked best was when two puppets came and talked about why harvest is such a special time. Squeak learned a lot that morning. He learned that harvest is a time to say thank you to God but it is also a time to remember and to help people who don't have so much food. Squeak also learned that you can worship God anywhere, even in a barn. I have a very special home, thought Squeak as he snuggled down for an afternoon nap. After all, it had been a very busy morning. So harvest is very much a time to say thank you. So saying thank you to God, saying thank you for all the food, for all the farmers, for all the tractors and things that harvest all the crops that have been growing all through the summer, for the weather that helps all those crops to grow. One other thing that happens at harvest time is that people often will donate food to a church or to a food bank for people who perhaps don't have quite as much food as others. You might remember in our harvest festival we did this year that lots of people brought food in and it was all in the hall ready to go to the food bank. And another way that people say thank you in church is by prayer and prayer is a way of saying thank you to God. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to write a prayer that could be used at harvest time to say thank you for all of those wonderful foods that we enjoy. So I've written an example of my own harvest prayer here and some of the things I would like to say thank you for. So you can see below I've put dear God or dear Lord either it's up to you. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for sending the rain and bright sunshine to help crops grow. We thank you for the farmers who grow the food and their huge tractors which plough the fields. 
Thank you for the juicy strawberries and the fluffy cauliflowers. We are grateful for the tall wheat and round pumpkins. Please look after the people who don't have very much food. Thank you. Amen. So have a think about what you could write in your own harvest prayer. There is a sheet in the home learning pack or you can write it on a piece of paper. So you want to say thank you to God or that someone else could use to say thank you to God for food and for things that happen around harvest time. You could think about foods that you like, fruit and vegetables that you like. You could think about farmers, you could think about the fields, the weather, all kinds of things. And you can use different ways of saying thank you, we are thankful for, we are grateful for, all of those things. Perhaps you could think about adding some adjectives to those things as well. So I've put here round pumpkins, not just pumpkins, but round pumpkins and juicy apples. So when you've finished your writing, remember to check it through, make sure we have capital letters after four stops and then you can email it to us. And I know that we're both looking forward to reading your harvest prayers.